TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem. I'm Aaron Viner sitting in for Jonathan Hassan. And in today's top stories, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad launches hundreds of rockets toward Israel's southern and central communities as the IDF ratchets up its aerial bombardments of the Iranian proxy's offensive capabilities. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu instructs Israel's security establishment to prepare for a multi-front conflagration of hostilities. ISA Director Ronen Barr reveals that one of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad leaders targeted in yesterday's surgical operation was actively engaged in preparing rocket launching capabilities in the West Bank district of Samaria. Air raid sirens sounded throughout southern and much of central Israel today as the Palestinian Islamic Jihad terror group launched multiple rocket barrages from Gaza toward Israel's most densely populated towns and cities, including Tel Aviv. The Palestinian Islamic Jihad and other terror groups had pledged to retaliate for the killing of three of its leaders in yesterday's surprise attack by the Israeli Air Force that clearly caught the second-tier leadership of the Iranian proxy unprepared. Consequently, defying expectations and in stark contrast to the slew of threatening rhetoric from Islamic Jihad and Hamas officials, no rockets were fired out of the Gaza Strip either last night or this morning. It is important to note that following a meeting of Jerusalem Security Cabinet, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, IDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Herzia Levy, and Israel Security Agency Director Ronan Barr held a press conference during which many details related to Operation Shield and Arrow were unveiled. On Tuesday, exactly one week ago, the Islamic Jihad terror organization fired rockets indiscriminately at Israeli citizens living in Israel's south, along the Gaza border. Not only was this an act of terrorism, but also a clear message challenging our presence in this country. On that same day, the defense establishment immediately began to prepare the operation to neutralize Islamic Jihad leaders in the Gaza Strip. These murderous leaders were responsible for firing rockets and for orchestrating numerous terror attacks against Israeli citizens. ISA Director Barr utilized the opportunity to highlight the unprecedented nature of the terror activities in which the three targeted Islamic Jihad leaders had been engaged in recent months. Tariq Izzedin and Jihad Ghanem, who were eliminated, are the primary terror orchestrators in Judea and Samaria and acted from within the Gaza Strip unopposed. Khalil Badni is the chief mastermind of rocket fire toward Israel's Gaza periphery communities. Tariq Izzedin was the driving force behind the Islamic Jihad's activities in Judea and Samaria. He acted to copy terror capabilities from the Gaza Strip into Judea and Samaria. He personally directed over 20 terror cells whose goal was to murder Israelis. Most of the activities to eliminate these cells is unknown to the public. However, it is known to us and the threat is also known to us, as it materializes every day and every night. To eliminate these terror cells, our men are sent together with the IDF and Border Police Yamam unit in the hearts of Palestinian cities. As an example, in recent weeks, we eliminated a cell in the Nablus refugee camp, which already started to manufacture rockets and launchers for the purpose of launching rockets from the Samaria district toward Israel. We view this as a dangerous precedent. Following interrogation by the ISA, which is also known as the Shin Bet, the cell members confessed their intentions and referred to Tarek as as the mastermind behind their activities. Meanwhile, IDF, ISA, and Border Police Special Operations Units conducted extensive counter-terror activities throughout the West Bank districts of Judea and Samaria, during the course of which a total of 19 suspected terror operatives were apprehended. And while no affiliation of any of the suspects was made public, Director Barr, who heads the agency responsible for most of the intelligence that facilitates these nightly operations, stressed that many of those arrested are in fact members of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, which is both funded and directed by the Islamic Republic of Iran. 
In recent months, many Islamic Jihad operatives have been arrested. They were responsible for a large number of terror alerts. Their arrest effectively thwarted these attacks and saved lives. However, we have no intention to wait defensively for the attackers. Rather, we will always act offensively against their handlers. It is important to note that Palestinian Islamic Jihad is an organization that is fully funded by Iran. The hands may be Palestinian, but its entirety and essence is Iranian. The same Iran which, with its other hand, supposedly seeks peace with the Arab and Western worlds. We will not allow Iran to operate by means of proxy organizations, and we will act to strike and foil any of its attempts to destabilize the security, stability, and harm Israeli civilians. IDF Chief Halevi underscored the complexity of yesterday's operation, which included an unequivocal message to the enemies of the Jewish state. And while the IDF makes every effort to avoid collateral harm, deliberate operations by terror organizations from highly populated territory in Gaza rendered it impossible to avoid civilian casualties. We have been planning this operation for quite some time, rooted in the understanding that the Islamic Jihad seeks to deteriorate the situation. We waited and assessed the best moment to strike. The message to our enemies is clear. Whoever fires a barrage of rockets towards Derrit, whoever acts relentlessly to kill Israeli citizens from Gaza and via directives from other places, is not immune. We struck the terror targets while minimizing harm to uninvolved people as much as possible. If it was viable, we would have conducted our operation without any collateral harm. However, we must remember that terror operates from within civilian populations as part of its methods, and by doing so, it endangers the residents of the Gaza Strip. The terrorists deliberately aim to harm our civilians while we do everything in our power to avoid harming civilians on their side. While Israel's defense establishment does not necessarily believe that Operation Shield and Arrow will turn into an all-out regional conflagration of hostilities, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu said that he has instructed the IDF in particular and the security establishment at large to prepare for any scenario. We are at the height of an operation. In the next several days, we will all be required to exercise fortitude and resilience. When we took the decision to initiate Operation Shield and Arrow a week ago, the defense minister and I instructed the IDF and the security establishment to prepare for any scenario of escalation, and it may include more than one front. This evening, I tell our enemies, any escalation by your hands will be met with a decisive response by us. As mentioned earlier, while the Iranian proxy Palestinian Islamic Jihad seemingly refrained from launching rockets toward Israel overnight and this morning, a cell was spotted traveling to a launch site at 11.46 a.m. in the city of Khan Yunus, located in the southern part of the Gaza Strip. As a result, an IDF unmanned aerial vehicle struck the cell before it managed to reach its destination. Subsequently, as a result of intelligence indicating that the Palestinian Islamic Jihad was preparing to launch rockets toward Israel's population centers, the IDF launched a preemptive aerial attack targeting over 40 rocket launchers throughout the Hamas-controlled territory. Nevertheless, at 1.35 this afternoon, the first barrage of rockets was launched at Israeli communities in the Gaza periphery, as well as the southern towns and cities of Sterot, Ashkelon, and Ashdod. And while the majority of the rockets and mortar shells either exploded in an uninhabited area or were intercepted by Israel's aerial defense array, some did strike residential neighborhoods, including one home in Sterot. We heard rocket alert sirens and entered the bomb shelter. We were in the area of the bomb shelter in recent hours, and we heard a few explosions, which we are familiar with due to our vast experience, that were primarily interceptions. We also heard one explosion that sounded different nearby, and we understood that it probably fell in the area of our house. When we exited the bomb shelter, we indeed saw smoke emerging from the adjacent house. Immediately, rescue teams arrived. The family of this house weren't at home. This does not feel nice, very difficult. On other hand, we completely backed the government of Israel and the IDF to do everything necessary. 
We are not experts and won't give any advice to our decision makers. We trust and back the government and ask that they will act with full force against the leaders and infrastructure of terror. Whatever necessary, even if this operation takes time, we back our leaders fully and hope for a long period of quiet. In a telephone conversation with the mayors and community leaders in southern Israel, Prime Minister Netanyahu highlighted Jerusalem. My instruction is for us to be prepared both for the possibility of further expansion of the campaign, as well as for very hard blows, now and in the future. All in all, I think that we have the upper hand here, and you are obviously in the midst of this battle, and I appreciate your support and your firm stand. It is important for our viewers to realize that rocket fire continues to be fired toward Israel at this hour. Aside from the 90 rockets fired toward Tel Aviv between 2 and 2.30 this afternoon, actually the number of incoming projectiles is significantly lower than during previous rounds of hostilities. While this could indicate the severity of which the Palestinian Islamic Jihad has plunged into, in the wake of several skirmishes with Israel that significantly diminished its military power, another important factor relates to the fact that the Islamist Hamas has once again decided to remain on the sidelines of the current conflict. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. Please pray for the peace of Jerusalem and the redemption of Israel. I'm Aaron Viner, wishing you an Erev Mevorah, a blessed evening, and God willing, we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.